Um, today we're going to talk about the TD Pilot, which is our new uh, eye gaze for iPad system. Um, so, uh, just to get the introductions out of the way, if you don't know me, my name is Connor Quigley. I've been working in Safe Care a couple of years now. Um, if you know Safe Care, um, or if you don't know Safe Care, some of the areas we work with people are across communication, assistive technology, multi sensory cognition, and environmental control. So, uh, generally, we kind of like to call it that if there's products out there that, uh, uh, if there's technology product out there that may help people with disabilities, we tend to have a look at it and we try to try to get involved or help as much as we can. Um, some of the products that we work with and partners that we work with uh, are uh, Radapt uh, for our mounting solutions, Ablenet, Abelia, BJ Live, and Toby Dynavox, which is the um, the company we're going to focus on today and one of their products and the product uh, we're going to talk about today is the td pilot so it's a, it's a brand new device it was only launched just before christmas and um, so we were very excited about it and um, so some of the things we were going to cover today and um, we're going to explore the features of the td pilot and we're going to show how td pilot empowers communi communicators so um, TD Pilot is an IOA, iOS based uh, system with an eye tracker, which is the first of its kind. Um, and it's something that we've been waiting a long time to, to be released and we're, we're very glad it has been. Um, so the TD Pilot provides communication and access to the I iPad uh, OS environment through iGay. So being able to communicate on a familiar platform is important consideration, obviously, and to be able to do that on an iPad uh, and to turn that into a speech generating device uh, can has now been opened up to to our iGaze users. So, um, so again, similar to some of our other iGaze devices, uh, the TD Pilot, um, you know, can be used in different scenarios, whether that's you know in the shade, outdoors, uh, indoors, uh, different lighting scenarios. So allows the user to use them in different scenarios. So if you're familiar with some of our eye trackers, the, the ability to use them outdoors is, is a new feature and that, that also um, that also transfers to the eye tracker that's that's built into the into the TD pilot. So allows for use in different environments. Um, some of the features, it turns your iPad into a, a communication device. So you've got your your uh, partner window at the back that allows for uh, for your communication to be seen by people um, and you also have loudspeakers at the back as well that allows you to be heard so um so yeah it's a, it's adding a, a bit extra to your, to your ipad so we look at a couple of different scenarios on, on who might use it who it might be um or might be good for so in this scenario we're looking at mr jones who's you know familiar with ipad and iphones was a was a, an ios user prior to uh diagnosis with MND and wants to stay on that platform. Um, so is now uh, having to explore text-to-speech apps, um, recognizes that iGaze is an option and hopes to remain on that iOS platform. So look, it's, it's something we got and we've always got over, over the years, is, you know, that's great, but can I have it on an iPad? So now we can thankfully say, yes, we have the TD Pilot and that's, that option to remain on the iOS platform might be a possibility for, for some of our users. Um, Alternatively, if we look at Mark, Mark is a teenager with cerebral palsy, has been using a symbol based AAC system with eye gaze since the age of four, um, interested in drawing, design, photography, and music. Uh, and currently, his sister helps him to do these things on an iPad. So, uh, ideally, Mark would like some independence uh, himself to be able to do these things using, using a device. So, the TD Pilot can meet you know, both the needs of both these users. So, so we're going to explore that in a bit of detail and how, how it might meet their needs uh, uh, shortly. So if we kind of go back to back to the, the partnership and how it came back, Toby have been working with Apple um, on this for a long time um, uh, to integrate eye gaze through the assistive touch functionality on, a, on an iPad. So if you're familiar with setting up accessib accessibility settings, um, on an iPad for mouse control or joystick control, then now Apple have integrated eye gaze control via the assistive touch. And the, the TD Pilot is the first device to to be in uh, MFI, a made for made for iPad device. And um, so it's the only eye tracker on the market that, that gives that experience. And um, so what that does, uh, this opens up everything via the by the iTunes Store, via the App Store on an iPad for our users. So 
it, it, it means that that whole ecosystem and content um, is now is now fully available to our users using an IDA system. Um, what is made for iPad? So it's a certification program. You may know, you may recognize this made for iPad logo here. If you're if you've ever bought like a, an Apple charger or a keyboard or anything like that, it just means that it's been certified. It's gone through the certification program for Apple. So the TD Pilot is the first eye tracker to go through this certification uh, for eye gaze on a on an eye, on a on an Apple device uh, on an iPad. So uh, hence why it's the only um, MFI eye tracker on the market. So um, so through your assistive touch menu that that already uh, exists on the iPad, your your IS5 TD eye tracker, which is similar to the eye tracker in the PCI and the um, eye series, then this gives you the the IA's integration for, for all your apps. So, uh, so yeah, it's, it's quite exciting. So, it's, uh, so let's go through uh, some of the hardware. Um, so just have a look at it. This is this is what the device looks like. Um, so just in a in a nutshell. So um, it's a 12.9 inch display. So it's based on the um, iPad Pro. It's a front facing camera on your device, obviously. So for um, facial recognition to turn it on. So that allows our users to independently turn on and off their devices um, without, without assistance. Um, also, obviously, your front facing camera, if you're FaceTiming or you want to take selfies or, or whatever it may be. Um, you've got a protective case. So the case obviously protects your iPad. So it gives it uh, protection. Um, you've got your eye tracker in built into it. So your eye tracker is, is part of the is part of the unit. Um, and obviously, as I said, it's the first ever made for iPad OS eye tracker from Toby Dynamax. So um, it weighs 2 kg, so it's quite light. Um, and it's got up to 10 hour battery life. So, so that's kind of your main features looking at it from the front. Um, from the side, you've got one um, connection that operates the base connection to the iPad itself. So it, it goes into the port on the side. So what that is, it's connecting your TD Pilot to your iPad to, for the speakers and, and switch ports, etc. So uh, you've got your switch ports on the side for and switch activation. On the back, you've got a rear-facing camera, obviously uh, for whatever use you may use that for. You've got your partner window that will work with TD Talk and TD Snap, which we'll, we'll talk about shortly. You've got your power and track status button, so you can turn on the TD Pilot uh, from here, and you can also check. Uh, track status so for maybe the communication partner or anything if they're setting up the the td pilot with someone and they want a quick access to see see the positioning of the device there's a there's a nice handy quick button at the back um and you've got a readapt mounting plate as well uh on the back so it'll work with any readapt mounts uh, whether it's wheelchair table stands or floor stands and then obviously you've got your powerful speakers because uh, it, is, it is a communication device um Oh, sorry, I forgot the last thing. There's an adjustable stand on the back as well. So this is where it has the Toby Dynamax logo. This means that if you're not mounting it and you've got it on a table um, and you want to maybe tilt it back or tilt it forward, the adjustable stand gives you that kind of that leverage to do so to, to give it a bit more flexibility for you. Um, the other side, uh, you've got a single charging port. So it comes with one charger and uh, which charges both the pilot and uh, the ipad so if your if your ipad if your battery is low on your ipad and your ipad starts to die uh the battery from the td pilot will kick in and give you that extra battery life and, and keep the keep the charge in the in the ipad um the it's future ready so obviously the case at the moment is designed for the 12.9 uh, inch ipad obviously apple changed the size of their ipads generally every two years so um, just they've, they've created a modular case at the moment so that if iPad do change to a, a 13 inch or 12.7 or something like that, it's just a matter of changing that, uh, changing the modular case, um, and you don't have to replace the replace the whole device if you're if you're changing the iPad. Um, okay, so let's let's have a look at what software is on it. So that's the that's the hardware. Um, as I said, drop any questions into the Q and A, and I'll keep an eye on it. Or the guy the guys are here as well. So. Um, if we look inside, the first um, first app we look at is the Copilot. So Copilot is it comes on your uh, device when you get it. This is how you set up your eye gaze. So you're doing your calibration, you're checking your battery level, you're accessing your your user menu. You've got um, some assistive touch options here, so you can change the responsiveness of the eye tracker, um, the tolerance, 
you know how somebody's eye is moving you can slow it down or or speed it up depending on the user so this all comes through the copilot um app that comes on it and then the other two apps are the communication app so we have td talk which is a brand new um communication app from toby and td snap which some of you might be familiar with already um, which is already a popular communication app from uh, aac apps from toby um and then obviously you have your apps and access to the rest of the ios system so um so there are kind of your four options you've got your td talk your td snap your copilot and then you have your assistive touch uh menu as well that opens up the uh the ios uh, system to our, to our users so um let's dive into these a little bit um, and look at each of these kind of in its own merits and, and how it works and um, so td talk is brand new it's been launched specifically with the td pilot and um, so it's a Communication app that's designed for eye gaze first. Um, so it's developed with a lot of evidence, provided streamlined app, developed features as needed, and supports transition. So supporting transition, what it means is you can actually get TD Talk in the App Store now. You can download it, it's free. So if you have somebody who may be progressive and you want to start on a on an iPad, get used to uh, communication app and uh, start exploring their, the communication system, they can do so. And then if they do require a TD pilot in the future, their, their app will go, their, their, their history and their app and everything will go with them into TD Talk. So um, TD Talk, it's it's fast, it's created for literate people and it's optimized for eye So it's kind of a one screen app. So here you'll see um, you have your keyboard, your keyboard is laid out, it's familiar to people. So a lot of times with AAC apps, sometimes people find them confusing and need a lot of kind of support to get up and running. What has been seen with the research and the kind of test trials on this, that people kind of know how to get going straight away. They're familiar with the layout of the keyboard. Um, it's based around the Apple keyboard. You've also got your predictive word just above your keyboard. So people, you know, will, it will predict as they speak. Your, then you've got your, your message bars at the top. So you can have four quick fire messages up here that you may use over and over again. And you also have your message window is in the middle of the screen here. So in a lot of AC apps, the message bar is at the top, but because this is designed for eye gaze and we wanna remove the amount of eye, reduce the amount of eye travel that somebody uses when they're using the system to reduce fatigue, et cetera, the message window is in the middle of the screen. And this message window can take up to five lines of text. So it means that you don't have to scroll back or forward if you want to edit messages and so on and so forth. There's some other kind of things around the design where, the backspace and the delete have been moved to opposite sides of the keyboard to kind of avoid those accidental presses. The clear message and speak button have also, there's a good distance between again to try and remove the amount of accidental presses. So if we think of Mr. Jones, if we think back to, you know, what, what he was looking for, this might be a good place to have a look um, at a communication system for him. So as you can see, this is kind of a, it blown up. It's an easy, it's familiar design. People kind of get the idea that, you know, we look at our letters to type and we've got our predictive word and phrase built into it as well. So um, it's easy navigation. So all their settings are actually, so if we look here, our keyboard takes up the screen. If we want to go into our settings, we look below the eye tracker. We just look off screen and it pops up this menu here. So that's not taking up screen space, et cetera, when, uh, when a person is using it and then they can pause their system. They can change their calibration, whatever it may be, or this button here on the left will bring them back out onto the iOS system. So it'll bring them into assistive touch. Um, as I said, easy eye travel. So as you can see here, we've got the, the message window kind of uh, with a couple of lines of text. So it rem removes that need for people to kind of go back and forth. Uh, you can have up to five lines of text um, and they can see it in the middle of the screen, again, allowing for kind of reducing that eye travel and um, eye travel around the screen. Um, so let's have a look at it in action. So here I'm using the TD Pilot, I'm using the assistive touch to with eye gaze open it. This is a recorded video, by the way, I'm not doing this at the moment. Um, as you can see, as soon as I open up TD Talk, the assistive touch menu um, is gone and it goes into uh, native eye gaze. So it starts to dwell on the button. So you're not using that. that Hi, my control. name is Michael. And you can type your, type your phrase. I can delete my phrase. At the top, you can see I have four messages. Wait, um, please. I am typing. My quick fires. And in here, then, I have my pre-stored messages. So I can have up to nine 
pre-stored messages here. So these might be something that I, I use uh, regularly um, and I just want them in a, in, a, in, in a page that I can go to them quickly. The user themselves can obviously um, edit and save these messages um, and create them within their within their own system. So as you can see, I've, I've created, Hello. created a message there. I don't know, can you hear this? I don't know if it's coming through your speaker, but it's just as I text to speech. As you can see, I can pause it. I can go into my settings where I can, you know, change my activation, my voice, my uh, ideas calibration, and I can go back out onto the iOS by just bringing up the assistive tech menu and pressing the home button. And again, I'm out of my system and I'm back onto the back onto the iPad. Um, so that's uh, TD Talk. Um, some something I was going to say there. Oh, and the voice is actually because I might forget it. Um, it's really good for bilingual because the user themselves within the keyboard, they just have to press uh, one button in the setting. So say if you have somebody that speaks English and Polish, they can quickly change it themselves over to Polish and all the prediction becomes Polish, etc. And then if they're speaking, they want to turn it back to English. It's just a, a one button click. So it's, it's really, really good. And there's loads of languages in it uh, for, for people. So um, all of this, the kind of reducing the eye travel, using the kind of quick fires and the pre-stored messages, it's just trying to kind of help people speed up. So, you know, if we look at a spoken word, we're looking at 150 to 180 words per minute, typing 40 words per minute, and then our kind of eye gaze users are somewhere between 10 and 20 words per minute. So the whole idea is that we can, we're, we're trying to help people communicate quicker using using our system. So the way TD Talk is, um, is, is kind of designed, it's designed around that novel and formulaic language and how we tend to use kind of 70% of what we say is formulaic language. So a lot of those pre-stored messages and, and phrases that we use, having them quick and easy for users to, to get access to them. So it, to do that, um, the way the system, as I said, we've got our quick messages, our phrase prediction, our word prediction, and our keyboard. So our keyboard obviously is more novel. We're typing our messages as we go, whereas our formulaic is our pre-stored quick messages. And a really kind of nice feature that they've done, I've shown you in the video that you can have nine uh, messages here. And you might be thinking, geez, that's not, that's not a lot for people. Like uh, some of our other systems, it's nearly infinite how many messages we can store for people and we put them into folders about you know health or you know visiting the shop so so why is it only nine so with this system with td talk it actually it, it it's it records i wouldn't say records but it learns how you communicate so your your phrases are actually stored in the background you don't actually have to go up to this kind of uh, pre-stored messages up here as soon as you start typing something it'll find from your history in the back end of the software, it'll just pop it up into the message bar and you look at the message bar and it'll speak it. So you don't you don't even have to do that page jump to get into your, your phrase prediction. So it'll store all of your phrases. It'll it'll automatically learn that, you know, you might say my favorite movie is, you know, I don't know, uh, The Godfather. And it'll kind of learn that in the background as soon as you start saying my favorite, it might predict movie is, Godfather and it'll come up there. So you don't actually have to start saving those. So it's a really nice feature and helps you, you know, helps that really quick communication. You also have fast correction. This is something very new as well. So previously, if you had written a message into the message bar and you had made an error on say the second word, you'd have to delete all the words in front of it to go back to that word and edit it to get it correct. Now you can just look on what you look at whatever word you want to edit and edit that within the message window. So as I said, you can have five um, lines of text. So if you look back up at your message and go, oh, you know, the fifth word in line three is an error. Instead of deleting everything that comes after that, you can actually just focus on that word and edit that word to suit. So it allows for quicker correction. Um, you also have alternative dwell times. Again, this is for I guess. So you may have, you might be a very quick typer with the keyboard, but you might want to slow down your dwell time on the phrase prediction because you just want to make sure that you're, 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 you're choosing the right word. So you can have different dwell times for different actions on the system. Um, you also have the uh, participation window at the back, the, sorry, the partner window at the back, um, which will, you know, as you're creating your message, it will display on the back of your TD pilot. You can set that in three different settings. So one is that it will show the text as you're speaking. So as you're typing, the text will come up. Um, you know, when you press speak, your text will come up on the partner window. One is mirror. So it'll just, as you're typing, the words, the letters and words will start to come up on the back. 
And the also is indicative typing. So what that is, is if you're familiar with using uh, Facebook Messenger or maybe WhatsApp or uh, I don't know, is it a WhatsApp? But you know, if you're, if you're communicating with someone, you're typing messages back and forth. If you have the app open, you can see like three dots on your screen when they're typing. That's what indicative typing is on here. So three dots appear at the back here, letting the partner know that you're typing something and, and you want to uh, you want to speak. So um, let's check the Q and A. Um, that's TD Talk. Um, so um, again, if any of you want further information, I'm conscious this is a webinar, so I'm kind of skipping through it. If you want, you know, meetings or you know. Uh, you know, if you want to dive into things a little bit deeper, just uh, I'm sure Ashita will throw up some uh, some links there where you can book meetings with us, and we can we can look at it in more detail. Um, TD Snap, I'm not going to go into TD Snap really. Um, uh, we've lots of resources and webinars on this, and uh, so today is not the day to cover it. But um, one thing that kind of is kind of worth pointing out uh, that is good for the TD Pilot from TD Snap is the integrated Google Assistant. Um, so that means Google Assistant is inbuilt into TD Snap, so you don't need a peripheral Google Home speaker or anything like that. So if you were thinking environmental control for your TD Pilot, anything that's Google compatible in terms of smart devices will work with TD Snap. So um, you may know, uh, so this obviously would be a good option for Mark, who we discussed, who is a symbol communicator. And so using um, TD, TD Snap is, uh, might be an option for him. Just I'll do a quick recap if you don't know if you're familiar with snapcore first it's now called td snap uh, the reason being is that yes you may be familiar with the core first page but there's now a text-based page set for uh, text users um, and there's also an aphasia page set as well so there's three different page sets that are included you can also add a gateway page set or a pod page set they're paid extras there's new integrations board maker integrates directly into it and google integrates directly into it as i spoke about the google assistant um, and new features, easier to set up, print function, more symbols, new scanning features, better ideas, functionality, new resources, um, and so on. So that's TD Snap. Again, if you have um, any particular uh, questions specifically on it, just you know, you can come back to us on that one. So I'm just going to get a little bit technical on the I guess side of it um, because generally a question is, can you use other communication apps on the TD Pilot? And absolutely, you can. But um, only TD Snap and TD Talk use region-based interaction for the IGA. So what that means is that if you saw it start of the TD Talk video that I showed, we were using it was using the assistive touch that the circle was moving around. As soon as it went into TD Talk, it became region-based. So you just have to look at the button. You didn't have to move anything to select it. You just look at the button and it dwells. So you can adjust your dwell times and stuff like that. So it also allows for more compensation when selecting things and improves the precision accuracy. So only TD Talk and TD Snap have that functionality on the TD Pilot. Um, so uh, so that's the two communication softwares that, um, that come with TD Pilot. We'll now show how it works um, using the iOS system. So you want to use the iPad itself. Um, and having that ability to, to use functionality with it. So you're using the assistive touch menu. So you get this through the settings menu. You go to accessibility settings on your iPad. Um, it allows you to tap, scroll, log hold, gestures, what I guess I'll explain in a minute. So once you turn on assistive touch, it looks like this. It's a, for me, you may be familiar with this if you've, if you've worked with uh, accessibility on iPads before. It's a little menu that you can move to any part of the screen. Um, and then when you're using the eye gaze, you have this circle, this pointer that moves around, moves around the screen, and that's how you select things. So again, I'll show you this in a bit more detail. Once you select the assistive touch, you have a menu, and this menu is completely editable. You select what's on it once you set it up. Um, so let's have a look at this in action, just the menu. So here, that circle moving around is the eye moving. I'm selecting my menu. You can see I can have the notification center. I can open up scroll. I can scroll up and down, left and right, etc. Uh, if I'm on a web page or anything like that, I want to scroll up and down, I can adjust dwell and pause and you know, um, move the menu, etc. Um, you can look at the device. So here you might lock the screen, you might want to turn the volume up and down, and you might want to take a screenshot, open up app 
the switcher, restart the system, uh, whatever it may be. So this is the iGaze user can do all this themselves. They have access to the, the whole menu. Um, you can open up your control center. And these are just kind of default ones I put on the menu. Actually, it's different now on my own TD file. I've moved them and I've changed, changed things around for, for, for depending on, you know, if I'm an assessment worker with someone, I can change this menu to suit them. App switcher, so I might pull up all the apps and, you know, select between, you know, my most recent apps that I was using. Um, and I can move the menu. I can go back out to, you know, I can press home. Um, and then if I want to move the, this uh, system touch menu, say if it was in the way, uh, you know, I was, you know, I don't know, on a website or something and it just happened to be in the way, I can then select it and put it somewhere else on the screen. So um, there's also a lot of um, shortcuts you can do with the assistive touch. So for example, you saw in that video, I was having to open the menu to press the home button. You can set what's called hot corners on your iPad. So you can have each of the corners having a separate action. So you might have one corner might be the home button, Another corner might be scroll up, another corner might be scroll down, and so on. You can set them up to whatever you want. If you want, like, like quick shortcuts. So it makes it really quick and easy to kind of to set up your iPad to, to suit for eye gaze. Um, yeah, so then using these with apps, obviously. So that's how the menu would work. So then, obviously, I want to use the system itself. And so I have my, that's my eye moving the, uh, the, the, Menu. I want to dwell on something, I want to select something. So here I just went into an environmental control app. So it's just, this is just our PJ Live app. Um, so I, as you can see, I control my TV or whatever it may be. I'm going back out. Again, I could have a shortcut for this. I wouldn't have to go through the menu. I might want to go into my social media apps. Um, or maybe I'll go to Twitter. I'll open up the scroll function. Again, I'm doing this the long way around just to show you. I can set up shortcuts for scroll, et cetera, but I just wanted to kind of show you through the assistive, te uh, assistive touch menu. So I can go scroll to the top, brings me to the top of my feed. I can go back out. Uh, and again, like uh, these are just apps that we don't know that, you know, if you're working with someone and they have, they like reading the New York Times, for example, they can just download the New York Times and read that newspaper. We don't have to do any real programming for them in terms of, you know, how we may have in the past through AC apps have to create specific pages for them to use iGaze to access these um, and so on and so forth. So it really kind of, as I said, it opens up that uh, the iOS system for them. You can also create what are called gestures, which is which is really, really, really good. I like that. Um, so things like if you, if you think of how you might use an iPad to do certain functions, like, you know, you swipe up to get rid of apps, you can create that gesture with your finger and then replicate it by your eye gaze. So you might get somebody to help you with that gesture once you might do it for them. And then they can re replicate that that gesture using the eye gaze system. So again, hard to explain, but if you want to um, if you want a closer look at it, um, just get in touch for, for further meeting. So um, we have loads of kind of um, kind of resources. Um, there will be loads of resources there for helping you refine ideas, give you practice ideas, how to use the app. So there's lots and lots of um, kind of ideas there. And it is one of those, like, you know, said Michael took it for three days and he came back to me and said, oh, do you know you can do this and this and this? It's one of those when you actually start to use it and you explore the, the iPad. And I was the same. I got a bit of time over Christmas and kind of was playing with it. You kind of, you really kind of explore it. And it it's really powerful, some of the stuff you can do on it. Um, so again, but there are resources there to help you to... Kind of give you a bit of uh, um, give you a bit of ideas of how you set it up. Um, in the co-pilot um, and through assistive touch, you can um, you can change things like the movement tolerance and the responsiveness. So if you have somebody that might find it a little bit hard to keep their eyes steady and stuff like that, on uh, to select things, um, you can adjust all those settings. There's also some other settings we kind of recommend, like you turn the iPad into dark mode so that the um, the iPad the apps are a little bit clearer and easier to get. We also, you can change the size of the apps on the home screen to make them a little bit larger. So all these kind of tips can make it a little bit easier for um, for people to um, to, to use it. Um, just on that, I kind of covered it um, uh, earlier just um, about the region interaction and assistive touch. So you saw there when I was accessing the app, that's assistive touch. We moved the we move the kind of small circle around and we select. 
But in TD Talk and TD Snap, it's region interaction. So if we look at this slide and we kind of, let's see if this works, we'll, we'll go back. Come on. Okay, that's not cooperation with me. <laughs> uh, what the region interaction is, if we can see this kind of magnet, um, on the, if we're looking at the left hand side of my screen here, the, it's supposed to do a little kind of video of what it does, but it's uh, not cooperating. Um, so what happens is if the person is, so this is the target we're trying to get, this this red circle, or even the, the smaller circle here is what we're trying to select. So we're in TD Talk or in TD Snap, we're trying to select the letter on the keyboard, or we're trying to select a message in our quick fires. What happens is as the user, is their eye is getting closer to the target, it works like a magnet and it pulls the selection in towards the, um, what you're, the, the button you're trying to select, and then you can just look at it and it'll select. So um, so it makes it, it improves accuracy, obviously helps people kind of interact with the communication system, makes them a little bit faster, et cetera. Whereas the assistive touch works kind of, you have to be a little bit more steady. You have to, because the apps are designed to be touched, you have to kind of get your eye on the app to select it. But there's lots of like, it's not, I know when I first kind of, when we started here, we we're kind of like, oh, this is tricky. And you know, we were kind of, it took us a little bit of getting used to it. Kind of then when we started doing assessments and working with people, we realized that it's actually us because we had a certain way of doing eye gaze on previous eye gaze systems where you actually use it with people who've never used eye gaze before. They don't have those, as someone said here, we had to unlearn bad habits, shall we say, you know, so um, so it's not, it's not, not, I don't want to make it sound difficult, it's just for communication, the region interaction makes it a lot faster. So obviously you want to be at your fastest when you're communicating, you want to get your messages out and stuff like that. So, um, so that's, Look, we've gone a little bit over time, but um, that's the TD Pilot. Um, it's a very short webinar, what we're doing here, um, but happy to kind of go into more detail with people. Um, I hope we've covered things like the eye tracker is simply credible from, from our point of view. It's it, it's really, really good. It's really accurate. Uh, outstanding. The TD Talk, I've been really impressed with that since it's come out. And obviously, access to the iPad OS is something and I'm sure people who have been working with iGaze clients in the past who may be on the webinar, I'm sure you've been asked that question before, you know, can I get eye tracking on an iPad? Well, now you can and it's certified by Apple. So it's, that means it's integrated to work correctly. Um, we'll just recap on some of the key features. As I said, it's made for iPad. We're using the iPad OS. We've got the partner window. We've got 10 hours plus battery. Um, we're using the iS5 uh, eye tracker and then it's coming with your TD Talk and your TD Snap communication apps. Um, technical specs, we'll just recap on these, 12.9 inch screen, weighs 2 kg, uh, battery life 10 hours and your IP rating is 54.